one of the instruments to combat trafficking in human beings, we have the Council of Europe Convention on Action Against Trafficking in Human Beings. This, I believe, is a fantastic instrument which forces the member states to have certain standards and to do something co concrete. But, and that is a big but, unfortunately, not all countries of uh, members of the European Council have signed and ratified this convention. People who were trafficked for the purpose of sexual exploitation, forced labor, or any other motive, and there are a lot of other motives as well, they were not treated as victims uh, of human rights vi violations, but as offenders, as criminals. And this had a double effect of aggravating the suffering of the victim, while largely letting the real criminals, the traffickers, off the hook. The Council of Europe Convention on Action Against Trafficking in Human Beings is a comprehensive international legal instrument containing concrete and efficient measures to prevent trafficking, to protect the victims and to prosecute the traffickers. If as a result of these protective and assistance measures which we have in our conventions, Victims feel, feel protected, they feel safe. They will start talking. They will be willing to denounce their traffickers, which will facilitate prosecution of the offenders, of the traffickers. Without the active involvement of local communities, it's going to be very difficult um, to defeat human trafficking. We also know that successful community involvement relies on consistent high standards of victim-orientated police and government involvement. That's why the Council of Europe Convention on Action Against Trafficking in Human Beings is so important to us. It seems that traffickers in Romania, um, and I'm sure in other countries, still view this as a crime with a high profit um, and a low risk. It's, it seems that they think it's a, it's a, a crime worth committing. There also seems to be the feeling that corruption might help protect the trafficker. We're here together because of shared values of human rights, democracy, and the importance of a shared prosperity, which will be fostered by open borders and cooperation. The inverse of this is the commoditization of women sold and exploited across borders, those very open frontiers that have served us so well in other areas. As the legal framework is concerned, Romania ratified all international instruments in the field of trafficking in human beings. National action plans for 2006-2007 and 2008-2010 were approved by the government. A national database on trafficking in human beings has been operational with the, within the agency since January 2007. Uh, it is a useful tool. Why? Because first of all, uh, allow us to evaluate the victim's needs and refer them to suitable, suitable system services immediately after identification. But it is also of strategic Im uh, importance to evaluate the phenomenon, identify trends and make them available for uh, institutions or organizations interested. In terms of international cooperation in the field of trafficking in persons, the relations with the important destination countries such as Netherlands, United Kingdom, Czech Republic, Spain, and Italy, and origin transit countries from southeastern Europe was strengthened. Anti-trafficking um, squad from the police department is doing their job, even though there are less and less police officers. The prosecutor, let's say that they have been trained together and they managed to put the case together, but at the end of it, the judge decides. And as you know, the judge is independent in any country, but in Romania, some are more independent than the others. And often we have the traffickers out on the street. We can go into why the judge decides that. And um, yes, I agree there is corruption. Everywhere is corruption. But I believe that a, a big chunk of it is um, discrimination. I work for 10 years in the field, and I've heard all approaches possible all throughout Europe. I heard how we moved the topic from um, uh, trafficking to prostitution and then we start arguing should we legalize or should we abolish prostitution? Should we punish the client or should we punish the whoever it's on the street, the witness? Shame on us because we don't talk about trafficking. I think if we want to really address trafficking, we should have a traffickers approach. Look who brings these girls in your country. 
And I think that the debate between us should be whether we have a hundred year in prison or 50 year in prison for the trafficker, because we have 13 year old girls sold. I want to see joint investigation. I want to see Romanian police officer patrolling the streets in Denmark, because when I went to work with the NGOs, I recognized the Romanian victims. The same way the Romanian police will identify the, the, the trafficker. In Spain, we think that trafficking in human beings has taken on very uh, alarming proportions. It, was, it remained hidden for many years. It, it is not something which suddenly appeared overnight. It's been with us for a long time. I've also seen there's a lack of social awareness but fortunately, recently, we are managing to overcome that. This has now become um, a subject for the media dealing in social policy and indeed for society in general. Trafficking is a crime which produces uh, very quick and very easy profits. In tackling these organized crime group groups, we have to adopt a multinational approach because trafficking is it involves crossing borders and both the countries of origin of the victims, countries of transit of these victims and uh, the uh, countries where the victims arrive. Each country must assume its share of responsibility. We started in 1999 working as a pilot project funded by the European Commission under the Daphne program. Uh, the target group of our work uh, in Proyecto Esperanza are adult women, victims of trafficking, forced sexual exploitation, and also labor exploitation and forced or serial marriages in Spain. Our specific goals are, on one hand, uh, providing comprehensive assistance to traffic trafficked women through uh, shelter houses, safe houses. One of our uh, aims uh, this year uh, was to lobby uh, for Spain to uh, sign and ratify the Council of Europe Convention. And we are happy that uh, the 9th of July Spain has signed this convention. It hasn't ratified the convention yet. We don't have a national plan of action yet. The government has been um, working on it for the last three years. It will be approved, as we were said, by the Ministry of Equality uh, next December. We think we need to balance better between a crime and order perspective and a human rights perspective. And we need to improve our legislation based on the Palermo Protocol and the Council of Europe Convention. <laughs>